Back to freeze drying mama. Um, today we are doing like we're comparing sausages. There are so many different kinds of sausages. Um, I personally like sausage and I have no bias. I love sausage. I don't care what kind it is. Yay, my water's done. Um, I, don't have, I don't care what kind it is. I have no bias. I love sausage. Um, depending on how I'm eating, I prefer a higher fat content or a lower fat content. So I thought, how can we freeze dry some sausages that will be good for you know storing? And so this always, of course, comes back to what is your fat content, what is your carb content, and how is it going to react in the freeze dryer and then with, um, with reconstitution. Sorry for my voice. I am still trying to get over the sickness that I've been dealing with for the last week or so. Um, so what I'm doing is we've done a comparison of pork sausage and turkey sausage. Now, as you know, turkey sausage is very, very lean. It has, I have a handy dandy little package here. It has um, five grams of fat and um, one carb. Where were you all my life? Okay, and then pork sausage. And this one has a significantly higher amount of, of fat, which is great. We love fat, okay? So um, what we're doing is I'm showing you what it looks like before you put it in. These are pre-cooked um, turkey sausage here. As you can see the color, it's a little, it has a different reconstitution, or it has a different constitution than this pork sausage. Um, both of them are without casing, so there's no casing on them. I did not cook them, I bought them pre-cooked. Okay, so they're pre-prepared and then frozen. This is the kind I get, the Johnsonville 100% premium turkey you know, whatever, blah, blah, blah. This is the kind I like. You do you for what you like. And you might not even have Johnsonville where you're at. So whatever your turkey sausage is, this is, so that's so that you know what it is. And then this one is, I don't even know what the brand is. I buy it from a restaurant supply company and you get like a, it's like 20 pounds of sausage, which makes me happy. Um, with six kids, we like go through sausage like you wouldn't believe. So what I've done is I put some of these on here and I already know which ones I like best. Um, for freeze drying, but I wanted to do a comparison. So what I've done is I, I obviously have these pre-frozen ones, so you can see what it looks like. And then I free, I've, I freeze dried these ones. So these are. I have my son come in. Sorry, that was loud. I have my son come in. And we're gonna look at these a little bit closer. Come on. Okay, so, okay, so these are the pork ones, and these are the turkey ones. Okay, and they've been they they took 42 hours to freeze dry and I am going to break this pork one. First, I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit about it. You can see that it has an oily sheen. Okay, see right there where I rubbed it? You can see that there's some there. I'm hoping that the lighting is helping you see that because I can see it. It's leaving it on my finger, okay? So reconstituting this is not gonna be fun. Uh, you can see how when you snap it, okay, so as you can see, when you snap it, it's nice and crispy, but it does have, you can see the fats and stuff in there. It makes this hard, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna actually break another piece off. I can't if I'm strong enough. Ah, oh, there we go. Well, look, it kind of crushed. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put some hot water on that, so you can kind of see how hard it is for it to reconstitute. The reason it's hard to reconstitute quickly is because it has a high fat content, and that fats fats do not like water. They don't. They're not friends with it. Imagine how you put, you know, water and oil together, and they just don't mix well. That's what you're having here is your, it's, it's still hard. It's just, it's really, really hard. Um, so, and it's really greasy feeling. See, you can see the grease. Um, I'm wiping it on my arm, gross. Okay, so, okay, but for it, however, it still has to pass the taste test. Okay, even sick I can taste how good this is. So the only way that I would do sausage, pork sausage, freeze dry. Oh, it's spicy. It's not normally that spicy. The only way I would do it is if it was a short term item. Camping. Um, if I was going to sit there and maybe saute it with apple or with um, onions and, you know, fish or something, something else that would help give it time for the heat to, to work on those phospholipids and loosen them up a bit to welcome the water in, then I would do it. But these are extremely oily and I can't guarantee that they're going to um, stay good for very long. I, I would see, I could see these going rancid in about a year. It's a high fat content. Um, in fact, when I put them in for my macros, I think it's like 60% fat and the rest protein. Now, let's look at the turkey ones. Go ahead and come in here, son. 
Thanks. Okay. So this is a turkey one. These are these two turkey ones. And I'm going to snap it. Ooh, it snapped really good. Okay. It snapped about as hard as it was to snap this one. I hope that doesn't mean it's going to be a bad constitution because it doesn't have a ton of fat in it. Okay. It does have, so it's one gram of carb, nine grams of protein, and five grams of fat, which would, if you do the math, five times nine is 45. That's how many calories. So there's nine calories in one gram of fat. So if you do five times nine, that's 45 calories. And then you have the nine grams of protein, and those are only worth four calories. So you do nine times four is 36. So your percentage of calories is still higher, is still higher with regards to the fat content. So we're going to see if it does the same stuff. Here, I'm going to do it with a different finger. Okay, there is no oily sheen on that finger. All right, that looks actually pretty good. Okay, so now we're going to do a little test here. I'm going to pull these over on the side. I'm going to do some water on them. This is hot boiling water. I would cook it in a pan if I was going to actually reconstitute it to eat. But I really just want to talk about how it's absorbing. Okay, I don't know if you can see this, but the water is moving toward the sausage. There is slight water movement there. And it's almost like it's absorbing it like a sponge. I should have crushed this one. Okay. Ooh, it almost didn't. It didn't crush and fall apart as easily after being in the water. And it does start, it is starting to feel a little bit softer. However, there we go. There it's breaking down. I don't believe that this would actually reconstitute as well. I mean, it's not going to reconstitute like guacamole, right? Or mashed potatoes. However, it's reconstituting pr actually pretty quickly. And look at the water's soaking up into that. Okay, so what we've learned here is that, see, look, the water still is not completely soaked up, and it's still crumbling. This is just acting like, okay, it's still kind of hard, but that's doing really well. Okay, so, so I'm going to do the taste test on the turkey sausage. The pork sausage was a little bit spicier than I expected, and it was just normal breakfast sausage. It doesn't, ooh, okay, so it doesn't have any spice, but it is reconstituting in my mouth the way I expected it to with the sausage, and it did it in the sausage. Um, and I know that enzymes, the enzymes of our saliva break down fats really, really well. That's why if like you ever spit on your glasses or something, the spit actually works better as a cleaner than like Windex, because it's natural fat, it's a uh, natural fat enzyme, so... It, I was expecting it to do better with the pork sausage because it was in my mouth I'm trying to reconstitute with those enzymes, but it didn't do well because it was already breaking it down. But in this one, it reconstituted fine before it started to break down. And you can tell that when you take a bite of your own and you do your own. And I highly encourage you to do an experiment like this yourself and only do two of each because that way you're not wasting a whole batch of sausage that you might otherwise enjoy to eating, okay? Um, but notice it as you are reconstituting it in your mouth. That's always different than what it's gonna be like on your dish. How you reconstitute it in your mouth is gonna be how you might end up having to eat it, right? So if you're like backpacking or you're bugging out, which everybody's, you know, is talking about happening right now, if you're gonna be bugging out and you've got food in your backpack, you're not gonna have time to stop and cook something. So you're going to want to grab your sausage, your turkey sausage, and just be able to eat it or, you know, whatever it's going to be. And if you don't like how it's going to reconstitute in your mouth from the, from the freeze dry state, you're not going to like it. And I, I want us to not just survive with this food. I want us to thrive with our food. That's so important. Um, if we like the food that we're eating, then we will feel better about our situation. Food has a huge mental, um, uh, it's, it, it's a huge, it plays a huge role in our mental game. That's why there are so many people who self-medicate and self-care with food. I'm one of them. Um, one of the things that I love and I can't get away from is frosting. It, it's like a comfort food for me or, my, or mashed potatoes. Um, like uh, there's a lot of who we are wrapped up in the culture and in those types of things for our food. So I, I highly recommend that you test and taste everything you do so that you, so you know if you like it or not. And it's okay to be picky. You're making your own food. You're being a, you know, you're freeze drying your own stuff. If you don't like split pea soup, why would you freeze dry it and eat and think, just because you think you're gonna eat it later? No, just next time instead of making split pea soup, make clam chowder.
freeze dry the clam chowder or do spaghetti, right? You, what's nice is you're not limited by what someone else offers to sell for freeze drying. What you're limited by is by your imagination and what you can freeze dry yourself. So would I do pork sausage or turkey sausage again? Pork sausage, yes, for camping or dirt biking or hiking, yes. I love the flavor. I think it's delicious. I love all the. I love. I love how it tastes in my mouth. I'm gonna give my daughter some and my son some to try. I think it's amazing. Turkey sausage, again, love it. Uh, this would probably last a little bit longer. There is some fat in it, and so I would. I would guess probably be three to five years of saving. Um, but it would be significantly longer than the pork sausage. I do recommend this one. I would do it again. Um, like I said, these little guys are awesome. They're pre-packaged, they're pre-cooked, pre-prepared. You can eat them just like that. I wouldn't, but I like them cooked. So I highly recommend you give them a try. Um, they were fast. This was a 42 hour batch and they came in or they went in easy. It was a really fast, easy load, not a cheap load. So try it first. You might love these. You might hate these. Who knows? So you give it a try and tell me what you think. I'd love to hear if you've done it in the, in the comments and let me know if you have any other suggestions that you'd like to try. I've just been trying all the fun stuff because that's what I want to do is the fun stuff too, right? I want to have that, not just salsa and peppers and potatoes for the end of the world. Um, thanks for joining the Free Strang family and I hope you've hit subscribed and that you're looking for notifications from us. Again, I apologize for my cold. I'm trying to work through it. Buck it up, right? Isn't that what our parents tell us? Buck up. <sighs> I'm trying, I'm trying to buck up. <laughs> All right, I hope you're having fun wherever you're at and that you're getting lots of stuff freeze-dried. We'll talk to you later. Thanks, guys.